Hello and welcome to another GCSE Geography Revision session. This one is going to be helping you tackle the dreaded eight mark questions. So hopefully it will provide you with a structure and plenty of practice questions to really help you get the most marks for these particular questions. Now why are the eight mark questions important? Well simply put, they make up such a large proportion of the marks that you can't, you can't afford to ignore them. So. In paper one, they make up 34% of the marks awarded in total. It's 32 out of 94. In paper two, it's 26% of the marks. And in paper three, it's 25% of the marks. So overall, eight mark questions account for 28% of all marks in GCSE geography. If you can nail the eight mark questions, you can really get the best grades possible. And so for those of you aiming for anything above grade five or six, you need to be listening and, and taking notes on this PowerPoint and practice, practice, practice. So. Um, before we start, and I will show you how to do this throughout the PowerPoint, before you begin to answer an 8-mark question, you need to know a few things. Okay, You firstly need to know the command word. Now, in GCSE Geography, there are only three command words used for 8-mark questions. There is examine, assess, or evaluate. As soon as you know the right command word, it tells you so much more about how to answer that question and what you need to include in your answer. So look out for that one first. The next thing you need to look out for is the content. Now what I mean by content is what geography information, what geography knowledge do you need in your answer? So what things are you examining? What things are you assessing? What things are you evaluating? As soon as you know the command word, you need to now know what you are doing with that command word. The third thing you need to look out for is whether there is a resource. Now, by resource, we mean a figure, uh, a diagram, a photograph, a graph, a table. It could be anything, but you need to look out for it. If you have an examine question, it will have a resource. So it will say in the question, refer to figure one or look at figure A in the resource booklet. In your answer, you have to use that particular resource. And again, I'll demonstrate how to do that. And the last thing, do you need to have a conclusion to your question? Now remember, eight mark questions are essay style questions. That means they're going to be quite long, but they need to be structured really well in paragraphs. If it is an assess or evaluate question, if that's what the command word is, you will need a conclusion. Absolutely, 100%, you will have to have a conclusion. They will reserve marks for it, and so your final paragraph will need to be a conclusion paragraph. So. This looks complicated, and believe me, this can, you can do this in about 30 seconds, because remember, you're only really looking out for one word in the question title, which is often a sentence long, and then what, what knowledge you need. As soon as you know if it's examine, you'll know there'll be a resource, or if you know it's assess or evaluate, you know you'll need a conclusion. Now, for each one of these, there is a very slightly different structure to follow, but I will go through each of them in turn. So to begin with, we'll look at examine questions. Um, there is very, very high likelihood that it'll be two of these throughout the papers. It'll probably only be those two, and they will appear in coasts and rivers, which is the very first section of paper one. So if you're examining something, it means you're looking in lots of detail at the different aspects or parts of something, and you're commenting on how they all work together to create an overall thing. Um, so when it comes to coasts and rivers, you could be asked to examine a coastal landform for example. So what different processes worked to create this arch? Or in rivers, you know, what different uh, river processes work together to create this waterfall and gorge? So they are, uh, you know, and landforms of coasts and rivers are really good uh, topics to use for examining, for example, uh, that uh, you might get in your paper. You could easily be asked about um, erosion or flooding as well and how different aspects work together to create the impacts of erosion or the impacts of flooding. It could even be a question about coastal or river management, you know, what different management techniques can be used to help reduce the impacts of erosion and or flooding. So these are all the types of ways you could go through for examining questions in coasts and rivers. And all of my kind of input is going to focus on coasts and rivers type questions. So because it's an examine question, and I said this at the start, there will be a resource. You will need to specifically refer to a diagram or a, a map or a graph or a table in your answer. If you don't specifically and explicitly refer to it, then the examiner will think you haven't used it. So that means you need to give 
directions, grid references, distances, specific labeled features, for example. Okay, um, now the structure that's about to follow, if you memorize this and practice, practice, practice using it with all the practice questions I give you, then it will help you for all exam questions you get. Now remember, you can pretty much guarantee the very first eight mark question you're going to get in paper one will be coasts examine something. And then the next one is going to be rivers examine something. So memorize this, and as soon as you've answered that in for, for paper one, then you've really done, uh, you've had a good start for your eight mark questions. So I've given you a, an example question here. Examine, there's my command word, the physical processes that contribute to the formation of the bar shown. Okay, now very quickly, let's do our command word, content, resource, conclusion. Well, the command word is examine. So I know straight away there's, a, there's going to be a resource. Um, the content, what am I examining? I'm examining physical processes for coasts, so erosion, transportation, deposition, mass movement, etc. And I'm also looking at a bar. So I need to know what a bar is. It's a coastal landform feature. Um, and it's the bar shown. Um, so that shows you where the uh, the resource is going to be available for a bar. There's going to be a picture of a bar somewhere in a resource booklet or in the um, answer paper. So these steps you need to follow will help you generally get up to six or sorry up to eight marks, full marks for this question. At least, even if you do it badly, you know minimum six marks. Okay, which is going to get you up to seventy five percent, which is a like, grade eight in anyone's um, book. So the first thing you need to do for this question is you name your first aspect or in this case, um, because this is about physical processes that, are, that create a bar, your first physical process. So you have to pick one from hydraulic action, abrasion, attrition solution, traction, saltation, suspension solution, longshore drift, geology, mass movement, weathering, all of these physical processes work together to create a bar. You just need to start with one of them because remember, you're going to do several paragraphs. So pick one aspect, one physical process which created a bar. Then describe what that means or what that is. This is just showing you, you know your geography. So if you've said, oh, well, you know, the bar was created by longshore drift. This is where you now describe what longshore drift is. You can't just say it. You need to show the examiner you know what longshore drift is. This is where most of the marks and, in, and into getting uh, scores of five or six at least are going to come from. You now need to explain how that aspect, let's say it's longshore drift, links to the question and extend it. So how did longshore drift help form a bar? Now that's the third part, that's always the most difficult part and you've got to try and extend it with connectives and again I'll give you an example of how all of this looks and how it works in reality so you can see it. Then lastly try and link some some part of your answer to the figure shown it doesn't say you have to uh so it doesn't say you you can talk about the figure shown it says examine how these physical processes contributed to the figure shown it's instructing you to do that so you must use something from the figure to show that you've used it so a distance a direction etc so let's have a look at what this question looks like Okay, so remember that's one paragraph. You'll want to do that again at least for another two paragraphs. Um, you don't need a conclusion because it's an examine question. Okay, so this structure, use it, practice it, memorize it, write it down, use it again, okay, until it becomes second nature to you because all your paragraphs, when you look at all the text put together on a page, it looks intimidating. But if you're building it up sentence by sentence to create one paragraph and then repeat the process, then all of a sudden you've got a massive answer which doesn't feel as intimidating. You've done it into little bite-sized chunks. So let's see what it looks like, okay? And pay attention to the color coding, the black, the yellow, the blue, the green. Okay, so what, how I'm going to show you this, all right, is I've got several practice questions to use, and I want you to try and practice using, firstly, the command word, content, resource, conclusion principle to try and help you dissect it quickly, and then try and write an answer using this structure as quickly as you can, okay? Don't worry about necessarily getting it in lots of depth straight away. Um, start just by making sure you can apply it quickly. Before you know it, the more you practice, you'll be able to do it in depth and quickly. Okay, so 
This is the same question that we started with and I'm going to talk you through it. So examine the physical processes that contribute to the formation of the bar shown. And here is the bar shown. Okay, so examine the physical processes that contribute towards it. Command word is examine, and we've done this already. Um, content, physical processes, bar, resource, there it is, and there's no conclusion because it's an examine question. So name your aspect, describe it, explain and extend, link it to the figure shown. This is a bit of advice of how to answer the question. So this is one paragraph that I've answered in good detail and I timed myself to do this, believe it or not, and it took me three minutes. Okay, now I know that I can write and type fast and etc., but you can really get lots of detail in a short space of time. So my first aspect is my first physical process, longshore drift. Longshore drift will have contributed to the formation of the bar. There you go. I've named my aspect. Now describe it. What is longshore drift? Longshore drift is the movement of sediment down the coast in the swash and backwash due to the prevailing wind. Again, a very short sentence just summarising what longshore drift is. So I've named my aspect and now I've described it. I've now got one or two marks easily straight away for my eight marks. To jump into four, five, six marks, I need to explain how longshore drift contributed to the formation of the bar. So sediment carried by the waves in traction, saltation, suspension has moved sediment onto the beach in the waves that go the same way as the prevailing wind. Now that is just me saying that sediment has gone du -du 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 -du. that's how it's contributed to form the bar. I've got to extend this if I want to aim for the top grades. So here's my connective. This means that sediment has continued on its path even when the coast has turned into a bay area. Now I've got to link it to the diagram. In the figure, the prevailing wind is from the southwest. There you go. It's from this direction, which is the southwest. So longshore drift movement is from west to east. I very clearly linked it to the bar shown. This particular bar tells me, that there's a compass there, tells me where the prevailing wind is, what direction it's going and how it goes. Okay. Now that paragraph is a really good start to this particular answer. What you'd need to do now is do two of the same paragraphs but for different physical processes. So you could talk about deposition and how deposition has occurred to create the bar over time. You could talk about um, early on, you could talk about erosion of the cliffs down here, okay? But as long as you follow, name your aspect and describe what it is. So what is deposition, why does it occur? Explain how that contributed to this bar forming and try and extend it and then link it to the figure shown. Um, and other things you could link, look, you've got a. a a scale here which shows you how wide the bar is you could say well the bar is approximately I don't know what two and a half kilometers wide okay so you've got lots of information you can use in this answer okay now this is believe it or not the exact same question and this was an, ex an actual exam question but this one rather than for being a coastal feature it's for a river feature this is for a meander so if you look at the structure of the question, look at the first one, okay, examine physical processes, formation of bar. Examine the physical processes that contribute to the formation of the meander shown. It's the exact same question, and this was in the same exam year paper. So if you could answer the first one, you could definitely answer the second one. Um, now, CCRC, let's have a little look. What is the command word? Examine. What content? Physical processes, meander. Where's the resource? Here it is. Got a compass there, got a scale here. And do I need a conclusion? No, because it's examined. So now to build my paragraphs up, I need to have an aspect, description, explanation and extension, and then link it to the figure shown. Okay, pause the screen, have a go at doing this and see if you can get the answer. Okay, I'm going to carry on. So if you've uh, haven't, if you've not yet finished, just keep make sure you pause the screen. Um, the the key for this is that same structure. Okay, examine the physical processes or whatever. You could literally do that for any landform. If you can find a diagram of a landform, you can do it. You can practice it for every single coastal or river landform that you see in your um, geography studies. So think of waterfalls and gorges, bay and headland. Um, cave arch stack stump okay that's all 
rivers and coasts, you know, landforms, floodplains and levees. Add them all, you know, try and practice every single one of those because the chances are that the exam board, if they're going to use a landform, will have to do that same type of question. Okay, now, but remember, it's not just landforms you might get questions on. You could easily get questions about something else. In this case, I've done coastal management. So I've got a photograph here, um, and I want you to try and apply the same principle, CCRC, aspect, description, blah, 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 to this particular photograph. So examine, command word, how coastal management, some content, has affected people and the environment, also content, in the landscape shown. So the resource is the photo, no conclusion because it's an examine question. Pick a first type of coastal management, describe what it is, explain how it's affected people and the environment in this landscape specifically, and again, name something from the picture to link it together. Again, pause the screen, have a little look at that, have a go at it, and then I'll talk through it in a second. Okay, so the different types of coastal management that are, are visible on this particular diagram, two of them are easy to spot, one of them not so easy to spot. Okay, so firstly, you've got a rock groin. Okay, this is a pile of rocks that have been built out to sea. They do the same thing as a wooden groin would do, they're just made of rocks. You've also got riprap, which are rocks placed in front of the cliffs, and both of those are fairly visible on here. The one thing you may not have spotted, but you should know, is that there's also the do nothing approach, which believe it or not, is a coastal management strategy. The strategy is to do nothing. Um, so they are allowing this, this area to erode, okay, it's quite significantly. So you've got rock, uh, uh, rock groins here, you've got rip wrap here, and you've got the do nothing approach. So there you go, there are three paragraphs you can use to start with. So one aspect of coastal management is rock groins. These are piles of rocks placed out to sea. Rock groins um, impact people and the environment in this landscape because they allow uh, longshore drift to be stopped, therefore building up a beach, which you can see a wide area of beach in front of the farm buildings in the photo. There you go. That's linked nicely. I haven't extended it, but they, I've, I've, I've kind of done it in very brief terms. So to give you a bit more information, this is one that, you know, something your answer could have looked like. Rip wrap has been used to the left of the photo. There you go. That's firstly my aspect named. Large boulders are placed at the bottom of a cliff to absorb wave energy and prevent recession. That's how that's the description of what riprap is. Now we're going to explain it and extend it. This affects people, which means the land behind is less likely to erode. So there you go. It's affected people. Why? Because the land won't erode so much, which means extension industry and jobs can be protected. The environment could be affected as the riprap may stop birds and other wildlife nesting in the cliffs behind which would prevent their breeding and lower numbers. So what I've now done is I've linked it to both people and the environment for this one management strategy, but I haven't yet linked it to the photo very well. So in the figure, the area behind the riprap um, are several farm buildings, that, and that just links it to the industry that's there. So there you go. That is again a nice detailed paragraph which is gonna get you straight away into the realms of kind of four or five marks out of eight, just because you've followed that structure aspect description explanation extension and link it to the picture okay right try this one examine how coastal erosion has affected people and the environment in the landscape shown same principle same structure pause the screen off you go okay so first thing we need to do is we need to dissect it so command word examine Content, what are we examining? We're examining coastal erosion and how it's affected people in the environment. Um, is there a resource? Yes, here it is. And is there a conclusion needed? No, there's not because it's an examine question. So what is the first aspect that I might pick? Well, it would be one type of coastal erosion um, or one way coastal erosion has affected people. So um, the paragraph you might want to start with may be something like um, destructive waves have clearly acted at this area of coastline, okay? Destructive waves are where the swash is very powerful and they're formed in storms. That's my description. This has affected people because it has damaged um, stalls and uh, food outlets in the area. This is bad because um, it means there's a loss of income 
for those people. There you go, his extension. Um, you can see this from the uh, dismantled buildings in the photo, one of which says the word chips on it, suggesting there is a chip stand there. There you go, I've linked it to the figure. So it is, it is straightforward when you've got those different sections to divide it up with. And these, this structure will work for every single examine question you get faced with. Okay. Now, it might not be a photo, it might not be a landform, it might be something as annoying as a graph. And this graph, again, appeared in an exam question. Um, the question was still an examine one. So I want you to attempt to see if you can try the same principle, but for this particular question. Okay, so pause the screen, have a go, and then when you're ready, unpause it and I'll have a little explanation. Okay, so command word, examine. We're getting used to that now. What are we examining? We're examining land use and how it's affected these two rivers. Okay, river A, which is this one, and river B, which is this one. Okay, so land use means how is what's on the land effectively. And again, looking at the graph carefully, we know that River A is an urban area. So the things you might expect to find in an urban area might be buildings, for example. And River B is a forested area. So you'd expect to find trees, for example. So how have urban areas and forested areas affected the shape of this storm hydrograph? Now, it's really important that you know what a storm hydrograph is and what it shows. So it shows how much water there is in the river at any one time. So the discharge, we'd call that. And this shows you that there's lots of water in the river flowing through. And this shows you that, that same amount of water hasn't gone into the river as, as quickly. OK, so the peak discharge is much lower for River B than it is River A, even though the rainfall event is the same Okay, for both of them. So hopefully... Um, you spotted uh, a couple of sort of differences, and I've got one paragraph to show you. So River A is in an urban area. So urban means, okay, this means that it's likely to be a town or a city with many buildings. So I've named my aspects, River A is urban, that means it's got lots of buildings. Um, explain and extend. Surfaces such as concrete and tarmac clearly affect the storm hydrograph as these are impermeable surfaces. That obviously means water can't go through. So which means they don't allow water to pass through and runoff, spelling typo there, sorry, is greater. So the rising limb, this bit, is steep. Peak discharge is high. And the lag time, the difference between this and this, is short. In the figure, the discharge peaks at 268 cubic metres per second for River A and the lag time is three hours. Having a graph means that the link to the figure is much easier as long as you link it carefully. So you can see this goes up to 268 cumex and the difference between here and here is about three hours. So I've clearly linked it to this particular um, figure. A second paragraph might say exactly the same but for River B. So River B is a forested area, full stop. What do we mean by that? This means that it's probably got lots of trees um, and vegetation in that area. Trees absorb moisture through their roots and intercept it, slowing it down. This means that there is less likely uh, that water will run off, taking a great a time or um, lowering the peak discharge and increasing the lag time. In the figure, you can see the peak discharge is up to approximately what I don't know, 70 cumex, and the lag time is about two, one, two, three, four, five, six hours. There you go. So it's twice the time it takes. So again, the structure is is straightforward once you know one okay now let's move on to the next type of questions these are going to be far more common uh, they are the most common eight marker you're about to find oh sorry you'll find sorry in your paper and i'm going to explain to you what assess means again and then give you plenty of practice so um, to assess anything it means you look at the different aspects of something and then you decide which is the most significant or important now, very much like examine, where you look at the different aspects of something, um, it, it does look at the separate parts of a thing. But where it's different to examine is rather than saying how those things work together to create something, you now look at which one of those things is the biggest or the most important, the most significant. OK, um, so. Um, the structure that, again, I've provided you will help with every single assess question you get. It's very similar to examine, 
but there are slight differences. So again, the more you memorize it and practice it, the better used to it you'll be. Um, this one, because it's a cess, does need a conclusion, but it's not very likely to have a resource. It can do, but it's not likely. So you will need to have a conclusion to say which of the things you're assessing is the most important. So here we go. Assess the different responses to drought in a named emerging or developing country. And this question again is not just one that's made up, this is an actual exam question. So the command word is assess, which means you need to have a conclusion. There is not a resource here and the uh, content okay, um, is that you're looking at responses to drought in an emerging or developing country. So how is drought managed in essentially Ethiopia because that's the country you're going to study. So CCRC, command word, the content, responses in an emerging country, um, no resource needed, but you do need a conclusion. So here is the structure. This will work for you. Take note of it, write it down, whatever. Name your first aspect. So in this case, one response to drought in emerging or developing country. Describe what that aspect involves. Hopefully this is looking quite similar, this structure. Explain how that aspect links to the question and extend with connectives. Once again, the first three steps here are exactly the same as you'd find for examine questions, but this is where it goes slightly differently. You can't link it to a resource because there isn't one, but because it's about a case study, but about something, you should try and include some specific factual information from the place that it's named. So, for example, it wants you to talk about Ethiopia here because that's the one we'd study. It's a named emerging or developing country. Give me a stat about Ethiopia or something specific to Ethiopia's drought that you can use in your answer. OK, so just like the first one, it's four steps. The first three are the same. The last one is really very similar. It's just this one you have to remember from your revision. You can't just pick it off a graph or a chart or a, a photo. So that is one paragraph. You would then do that for a second paragraph for a different aspect. But remember, you've got to reserve one paragraph at the end, your conclusion, um, to tell me which of those two is the most significant. Now, you could do four paragraphs in total if you wanted to. So you've got a bit more to draw from. But time is a factor. Eight mark questions should be answered in about 10 minutes total. So to do any more than three paragraphs is is quite tricky. You'd have to be one of the, a quite a quick writer, which is fine, and some people can. But if you want to stick to just two good paragraphs, really well developed with extensions, and then a conclusion of those two, which is the most important, the biggest affects the most people, or, you know, created the biggest damage, the biggest uh, problems, or helped the most people. Okay. So let's have a look at what this looks like in reality. So assess the different responses to drought in a named emerging or developing country. Here we go. In Ethiopia, live aid is one way drought was responded to. OK, so that's naming my first response, live aid. This is a concert that was put on by World Famous Act and a single released about the famine. So that is describing what live aid was all about. Now, this is telling me how it how it helped. OK, how it helped respond uh, sorry, to the drought in, in Ethiopia. This helped raise awareness of the issues and also the single release made a vast amount of money to help relief efforts. So raised awareness, made money, extend it, which means that a larger amount of money could be generated. So now that's my extended reasons. In the UK, the single was number one in the charts at Christmas and raised the profile of the crisis to millions. So I've now given some specific detail about the Live Aid Band Aid single, whatever it was. Um, UK single was number one in the charts at Christmas. There you go. That is a very straightforward paragraph to this assess question. Now you need to do another one. I'd like you to maybe look through your notes for Ethiopia if you've got some. Um, uh, you should have some. And then try and complete a second paragraph in the same way. Name another response to the drought in Ethiopia, maybe emergency aid, for example. Describe what that involved. Tell me how that helped um, support that country and extend it and then link it to some sort of stat, some sort of figure, you know, like I don't know, three million bottles of water were handed out in the first week. Oh, that's made up stat, but that's the kind of thing we're looking for. Now, finally, you need to conclude. And to conclude, you just pick which one of these two that you've written about you think was the best or the most significant, the most important. So overall, I think the most significant response was Live Aid. 
I think this because, and again, give me lots of reasons for why it's the best. Okay, it raised most awareness possible, and it got young people involved in fighting famine, whereas normally they wouldn't care. Or whatever it is, it doesn't really matter what you write here, as long as you're very specific about why you've picked one of these as the most significant response. Okay. Hopefully you can, again, pause the screen, look at that, and, and use that to help you. Um, let's try that with, well, sorry, there's, there's questions at the end which you can practice this on again. So the principle is, is the same. The structure, this structure, will work for every assess question. So remember, go back through this PowerPoint and help uh, use it to help you. Right, lastly, evaluate questions. Okay, so you're probably going to get one or two of these um, in throughout the three papers. They are less common than assess questions are, um, but they also have a very definite way you can answer them. So now when you evaluate, it means you, again, look at the different aspects of something, just like assess, just like examine. But in this case, you're looking at the good and bad of each aspect to say overall, is that thing good or bad? So as a quick recap, examine, you look at the different parts of the thing, how do they work together? Assess, you look at the different parts of a thing and say which one is the best, the biggest, the most important or most significant. Evaluate, you look at the parts of something and for each part you say, is it good, bad? And then overall, is it good, bad? Okay, that's evaluate. So again, this structure that I'll provide will help you for every single evaluate question. You also need to have a conclusion. Um, it's not very likely you'll get a resource to use for this, but again, remember, in your conclusion, you're saying overall is the thing that you're evaluating good or bad. So here's a question to sort of uh, show you and demonstrate. Evaluate the ways that challenges of rapid urbanization have been managed to improve the quality of life in an emerging or developing country. This is what I was talking about when it comes to dissecting the question. If you're faced in an exam with lots of pressure and time and you see all of these words, okay, this big sentence question, you're going to crumble unless you've got the tools to help you. So we do the CCRC. Evaluate is our command word. And straight away now I know there's probably not going to be a resource and I will need a conclusion. What content, what thing am I evaluating? Well, I'm evaluating challenges of rapid urbanization. So what bad things can happen because of quickly urbanizing. I'm looking at ways in which they're being managed and how that improves the quality of life in an emerging or developing country. Okay, so my answer has to talk about challenges of rapid urbanization being managed, so management methods, and how that is helping improve people's quality of life in Mexico City. Okay, so here's the structure. Name your first aspect, the same as before. In this question, it's one way that problems of rapid urbanization have been managed. Describe what that aspect involves. Then, this is where it starts to get a bit different. Give a positive of that aspect, so a positive of that management technique, and extend it. Why is this management method successful? And then, if you are gonna get grades nine or eight, you need to give some specific information about that management strategy. Your vision, and this is where your vision comes into to its its um, into its own. Really, you need to know a specific stat or place or or scheme that has worked. Then, because you're evaluating and you haven't really evaluated something unless you've given the positive and the negative, give a negative of that aspect, that management strategy, and again try and extend it with specific factual information. Now you can see evaluate questions have a little bit more to them okay because you've got the positive and extend it and the negative and extend it with the details there's a bit more to it and the paragraphs are a bit chunkier a bit bigger and that's why they don't use them so much in exams because they're a bit more difficult to answer but again it's still paint by numbers do part one part two part three part four part five part six and you've got a really good paragraph Let's try and do that for two paragraphs at least but don't forget, you've got to do a conclusion. So overall, are the good or bad of this management strategy, wherever it might have been, um, stronger than the other one? So is, is, it, is there more good than bad overall? And overall, have they managed the challenges of rapid urbanization well in Mexico City? That's really what you're concluding. So let's see what this looks like, okay? So one top-down strategy used in Mexico City is the Plan Verde. That's the name of the strategy. 
This is where services like buses are made more eco-friendly. That's a very brief description. Name a good aspect. This is good because it provides faster, less polluting transport. Extend, which means that air pollution is reduced. And here's a stat. Levels are down 35% from 2000 due to the Green Initiative. Great. So here I've got a strategy named Plan Verde. What the Plan Verde is or what part of it involves and a good part that's extended. OK, each of these little bits, remember, is a, look, that's a small sentence, small sentence, small sentence, small sentence with a little connective, small sentence stat. To evaluate, though, I need to do the negative. However, buying the buses and improving the network of roads was expensive and time consuming. OK, that's a negative. This means less money is available for other projects that may benefit local communities for some time. The Plan Verde was a 15 year initiative. There you go. So that summarizes the good and the bad of the Plan Verde with stats. Now you could try that with another management strategy for Mexico City. I'd probably go for a bottom-up strategy, okay, just to have a bit of a contrast because this is a top-down strategy. And then finally, overall, you decide are these strategies generally better or worse? You know, are they good or bad? Um, do you think they're positive or negative? And and why now this is where you can basically say anything you want but go for what you think whether it affects the most whether the cost justifies you know doing it etc okay so evaluate questions more tricky but again still have a very definite bump 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 bump, bump structure all right now the next slides okay i'm not going to talk much over i'm just going to introduce them and then give you the opportunity to take them one by one go back onto this PowerPoint as often as you like to practice the eight mark questions for examine, assess and evaluate. And when you've done them, and don't, you don't have to do them all at once, okay, you can do one by one and every now and then just hand them in to me or your teacher and ask them to mark them. Essentially, if you practice all of these, the chances are you've probably hit a, an exam question that is going to be faced, uh, you're going to be faced with at the end of year 11, okay, because there is only so many things they can ask about. But if nothing else, make sure when you're doing it that in front of you is the structure and you're practicing doing that command word content resource conclusion dissection part because the quicker you get at that the better the more time you've got to actually write your answer in the exam okay so um remember 30 seconds or a minute to dissect it and then 10 minutes max to write an answer that's what we're aiming for for like um gcse if it takes you longer to start with then that's not a problem just make sure you're using that technique really, really well and getting feedback as regularly as you can. OK, so, yeah, I know there's lots here, but each bullet point, OK, links to a particular um, part of the course. Now, I've already covered basically everything I know and I can cover and I can think to cover for the coasts and rivers section. OK, so if you go back to the start of the PowerPoint, it says practice doing this for all the particular landforms that might be available that is your practice for um, uh, the first section uk landscapes for weather hazards and climate change there are these bullet points and i've gone for assess on all of them because i haven't yet seen an evaluate question it's unlikely you'll get one um, so assess the responses to drought again you could say evaluate the responses to drought and that could still work um, but these ones in bold were actual questions that appeared in exams and these ones are just ones that I've made up based on what could change so it could be a different country you're looking at it could be the impacts of drought rather than the responses to drought um, so try these questions using the structure provided and look if you, even if you just do the weather hazards and climate change ones you should be really really good at remembering how to structure assess questions for ecosystems biodiversity and management again the ones in bold were actual questions and all of these other ones and there's a few evaluate ones chucked in there too um will help you practice using assess and excuse me evaluate then for the paper two you've got changing cities questions okay all available here and here and here and here and again i'd encourage you to pause the screen for those this last slide here and this one to just practice them as and when you want to do that particularly when you're starting to do your you know, proper revision in January of year 11, really. Um, that will be when you want to start practicing this in, in real um, urgency. Um, so there you go. There's loads and loads of potential questions that you can have a go at and hand in to me or your teacher. Right, now, the last section of this paper is about eight mark questions and paper three because there's ever so slight differences 
for the field work paper and eight mark questions. And so I need to explain those to you now. So paper three has got two eight mark questions, uh, but they vary uh, you know, from the rules a little bit. Um, the command word is still there to use, and um, but you just need to be aware of a couple of things. So there will be a resource that you need to use for one of the questions even if the command word is assess or evaluate. Now I know already I've said that oh, you only have a resource for examine questions, but in paper three, that's where it breaks the rules a little bit. One of the questions will give you a resource to use in an assess or evaluate question. So look out for that. Um, the content of the eight markers, okay, so the second C of CCRC, could be one of two things. Firstly, it could be from your fieldwork investigation. So if when you're looking at the question it says from your investigation, the content, you have to fill in the blanks there from your fieldwork in the river or so the Swannington Beck or when you went to Norwich uh, into the city. Or um, it could be about someone else's fieldwork and that's where the resource comes in. So it could ask you to assess or evaluate someone else's fieldwork but because you haven't done it, you need to know what their fieldwork was. So it provides you with a graph or a table or a chart of their fieldwork. So you've got a resource. That's where the resource comes in. Um, now, there's going to be one of each of these. You will have one eight mark question that is about your fieldwork. And you'll have one eight mark question about someone else's random fieldwork. It will still be about either rivers or urban areas, but you won't know the data. You won't know what they've been looking at. So there will be one of each of those type of questions, okay? If you're confused about that, come and ask me about it um, in person directly. But essentially, the two eight mark questions you'll get on paper three, one of them will be about your fieldwork, one of them will be about someone else's fieldwork. Okay, so let's have a little look. This is an example. This was in one of the papers. The question, using both figures 1A and 1B, assess, so that's the command word, the possible conclusions that might be drawn from this river investigation. OK, now, CCRC, OK, command word is assess. So you follow that assess structure, get an aspect of it, describe it, link it to the question. And then um, in this case, because it's someone else's field work, this river investigation, it's given you resources. So it specifically tells you to use figure 1A and 1B. Um, and that's where you that's the big clue there that you've got to use this other resource. In fact, it doesn't just say use one of them, you have to use this one and this one. Um, so if it's a surprise investigation, it will still be similar to your investigation because it's rivers. You know, they can't, there's only so much they can do about rivers. So there should be certain things that you, you know from your investigation that you can apply to anyone that they chuck at you. So if the rivers investigation is the one that is someone else's work, you should still know about the difference between power's scale of roundness and um, how width can change from source to mouth, for example. So let's have a little look at um, uh, um, another question. Um, you have studied an urban area as part of your fieldwork. Evaluate the different techniques to use to present your data. So again, command word, um, uh, ignore that, sorry. Command word is evaluate. So you should be able to do that from CCRC. There is not a resource because this one is about your field work. So this bit, you've studied an urban area as part of your field work. Evaluate, so give me the good and bad, okay, about the techniques you used to present your data. So if you used a bar chart to present your data, you need to say, we presented our data on pedestrian numbers using a bar chart. That's aspect describe that aspect um, a, a pedestrian number blah 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 how many people walk past us or whatever it is okay and then evaluate this technique was really good at showing the information because extend it however this technique wasn't quite so good at this because and again extend your answer so in paper three these questions are a bit trickier but luckily there's only two of them uh, another example study figure one in the resource booklet they go there's a resource evaluate the accuracy and reliability of the fieldwork method shown in figure one. Okay, so it's evaluate, you need a conclusion, but what are you uh, evaluating? The accuracy and reliability. How accurate and reliable are these methods for measuring depth, width, and velocity from someone else's fieldwork? So this is your resource. This is what you've got to draw from. 
okay um so there you go that this is something which again is there's a resource available and you must quote specific things from this resource in your answer to get the full marks okay so and to, to let you know accuracy means you know how precise is it okay were the exact uh so were they exact at the same time were they you, done the same way at every single site can you trust the data can you trust the conclusions okay and then again another example you've studied an urban area as part of your field work assess the extent to which your conclusions answered the inquiry question so did the information you get help you with the actual what you're trying to find out essentially but again you have to quote your field work the examiner doesn't know wh where you went and what you did so you've got to fill in the blanks and say right well our inquiry question was to find out this about Norwich um, and the conclusions we draw uh, we drew for this one did help us answer this um, and this one kind of did a little bit so overall the best thing that helped us was this bit okay same principles apply but it's ever so slightly different um, and you have to fill in the blanks with your own information your own data so here you go here are some more to try just to give you a bit of practice um, these ones are all about your own field work okay so you have studied you have studied you have studied read it through have a little go but just again keep that principle of evaluating and assessing okay your field work and, and do your best Okay, so that concludes eight mark questions. I really hope you found that useful. It's pretty heavy stuff, but don't be intimidated. And what you know, what I said before, practice makes perfect with regards to eight mark questions. So any ones you get done, let me know, but follow that structure and look out for those command words. Okay, thanks for listening and I'll see you next time.